Hello guys and girls! Today's episode will be about prototypes, and especially about why do we prototype emotions in games, prototyping in real world, prototyping rules, what I was looking for when prototyping, and what to do after prototype phase. As you can see, there is no time to waste, so let the show begin! If you can see my life, I had those moments when I thought of this awesome idea for a game and I thought it was something big and cool. And what I did next, I instantly rushed into my computer, started drawing diagrams and writing things on Excel. And here comes the concept that is the biggest curse, yet is also the biggest blessing of the whole game industry. Games itself aren't a product, they are experience. And they should wake up emotions inside of the player, or at least provide them some fun. And this is the thing, there's no way that you can measure those things or any paper diagram or Excel. You just have to make a prototype to see if those things are working. If you're making the game and it is fun to play, it's really all that you need right now. But there are games that resolve around more complex emotions. As more complex emotions are introduced, they require more prototyping to not throw the player away. Let me give you two quick examples of those. The first example on my list is The Darkest Dungeon. Playing these games comes with a lot of fun but also it does provide totally different emotions on the other side of the spectrum. It is RAGE! It is a pure pain to just watch your favorite hero die because of critical strike from the monster. Because of those mechanisms, 97% of the players didn't saw the game ending, they just gave up. Yet, this game was a pretty huge success because of emotions that it provided to the players, even if those were negative. This example is kind of extreme, I guess. So let us go to another example which is much more positive than this. So the next game I will be talking about it is Hades. With such a nice animations, fluency, this game is just really enjoyable to play. But in my opinion, it is not the best that the game has to offer for you. Something that was making me playing this game over and over again was its storyline. I had enormous feelings of sympathy towards this Agrius, and also there was a lot of curiosity about the future of his storyline. Really fast when I was playing this game, I developed some kind of addiction. Whenever I died, I wanted to resolve all of the dialogues that are waiting for me. They were engaging and short enough that I never get bored of reading or listening to them. And the last of the dialogues always belongs to the Scully, which sits in an armory where you can pick up your weapon. And it was working like this that I was just picking this weapon, the next thing I was doing I was just testing it out on the field. And I was again in a core loop. So right now you can see that the things that was keeping me most to this game was my feelings towards the characters. In conclusion, both of those games were a success. And a big part of it is because of the feelings that they have awakened inside of a player. And it didn't really matter if they were negative or positive. The most important thing is that they were there. So right now I will tell you a little bit about my prototyping routine. And in this case, I must say to you that I'm kind of a lucky guy. The games that I'm making are card games. It means that I can print them out and test them in real life, which makes them much more easier and faster to prototype. But it can also deliver another layer of the problems. Cards you are seeing right now are not Will of the Gods prototype. I must admit to you that I kind of lost the Wheel of the Gods prototype. <laughs> but this will be a great example to show you a few problems that I encounter in here. First of all, it was a really good way to test my whole idea, my core loop of the game. But I found out there is one enormous problem that is no going here. The game was too complex and all of the players lost track of what is happening on the board, even me and I was creator of this game. Maybe it would be a good game if I would prototype it on a computer where players don't have to keep track of all the things that are happening on the board. And here comes the first thing about prototyping. You must make sure your prototype is playable, that there are no bugs preventing player from finishing the game, and that you can explain the rules so he can understand them. The whole idea is to test out if the player is having fun and he is reacting the way you wanted him to react. And now to the second rule of the prototyping. It can be ugly, ugly as hell, it can have no UI, it really doesn't matter. Your game should have much more to offer than just graphics. And to have a visual feedback you have a concept art, so as long as the players distinguish the things apart and he didn't get lost, it is fine. Third thing is that you must be ready to abandon your project. If you are testing the game and you see that the players aren't engaged and they are not having fun, maybe it is best to leave the project out. If you did screw up the core concept, it's really hard to get it out of this situation. No matter what things you will add to your project, there is a huge chance it will just not work out. Ok, so how did I know that the prototype of my game is going to work out? I was presenting Wheel of the Gods to the people and I was looking at their emotions. As it is hard to tell if they were having fun or not, mostly because they were my friends and they were always saying oh it's cool, it's cool, I'm having fun. I was looking if they are engaged into a gameplay. I gave them an easier encounter to warm them up to introduce new concepts into their head. And later, I was giving them the hardest encounter that I have created, a fight with Freya. 
It's not an easy encounter because of the creatures that the Freya summons are kind of strong. And also as the fight goes on and on, the Freya will reach her enrage and start adding strong cards into her deck. And in my opinion, it is impossible to win fight with Freya at the first try. Player has to play a few times to find out what works best for Freya. My friends were repeating this fight up to 3 times before killing Freya. And they didn't have any frustration, because they were feeling that every fight is getting them closer and closer to the kill. That was exactly the thing that I wanted to achieve. And the last thing that I want to talk about today is what to do when your prototyping phase is over. So, during the prototyping phase, you should be able to identify the most volatile parts of your project. In my case, those were the car's abilities. I knew that I would have to constantly change how do they work and what abilities do the card have. So right now, I will show you how do my ability system work. As you can see, inside of my code, I'm using Builder and Director pattern. If you want to know more about those patterns, jump to the second episode when I explain those. Ok, so let me perform some changes really quick in here. As you can see, right now, the hooking gives you a spell power buff and that's all that he really does. And let's see if it will be easy to add some other keywords like card draw on play and for example a pack buff. To do this, I have to add just two of those lines and it's just working. Let's see this in Unity. So we can see right now that it all was pretty easy. As I said, this will be the most volatile part of my project. And this is the code that I spent the most time working on. Because right now, whenever I will add new card or encounter, I can build them up from the old keywords, which I have around 50 right now. And I think those are the conclusions that I found out when I was prototyping this game. I guess that that was kind of a lot of things as for one video. If you enjoyed it, like and subscribe. If you would like to talk more about prototypes, leave a comment below and I will answer. See ya and boy!